and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to do a quick preface for our upcoming series in which we'll be exploring the works of esteemed director Zachary Edward Snyder while I give a makeup tutorial. I want to talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to critiquing Zack Snyder, and that is Zack Snyder's superfans. Of course, I don't just mean people who like Zack Snyder or his films. I want to be very clear, I'm not judging anyone for liking Zack Snyder films. Excuse me, my favorite movie is Pompeii starring Kit Harington. I have a deep love for films that are unrecognized for their genius and are also made by horribly problematic filmmakers like The Stupid starring Tom Arnold. I'm talking about that particular subset of fans who have gained a reputation for harassing people online and who crawl out of the woodwork to call me a cunt. So I've just been putting this on my face, which we call a foundation. Last week, I got to meet some of these wonderful Snyder fans after I tweeted a very sassy comment about the blatant 9-11 era Islamophobia in the opening sequence of Snyder's 2004 Dawn of the Dead. And at first, I thought to myself, you silly girl, you opened a can of worms and now you're mad that the worms are all over the yard. But what really struck me was that I realized this type of Zack Snyder fan doesn't actually seem to respect Zack Snyder as a filmmaker. So here I was just going in with the color called the Kuleshov effect, uh, which is actually made by combining two colors that when used together create more meaning than when either one is used alone. When I do a film analysis, I use this product, which is called a close reading. According to the Harvard College Writing Center and the fine print on the back of this, close reading involves three steps. First, you read the text, or in our case, watch the movie with a pencil in hand, annotating as you go. Second, you look for patterns in the things that you've noticed in the text, such as repetitions, contradictions, similarities. For Snyder's films, as we'd watch, we'd write down the pattern of creative choices that emerged along the way within individual movies and across his entire filmography. Third, you ask questions about the patterns that you've noticed, especially how and why. And boy, have I been asking myself why. When we write about any particular scene, we watch that scene over and over and over to make sure that we get every detail right. Sometimes that means uploading a scene to your editing software and literally going frame by frame to study things like shot selection, composition, and how one shot answers the last. A lot of the time we'll watch something once, write a draft of the essay, and then as we go back and watch it again, scene by scene, beat by beat, we realize that we need to make our argument stronger or clearer or completely change it because what we thought we wanted to say isn't supported by the imagery, the plot, or another aspect of the text. So now we're going to go in with this color called my overpriced film and theater degree. This is a very expensive palette. So let's do a little story time about the time that I tweeted about the Islamophobic imagery in Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. I was describing the sequence of images in the opening titles of the movie, which uses the most basic rules of cinematic language to tell us that, for some reason, Muslims are involved in the origin of the zombie infection. It's pretty straightforward, three shots, very clear progression. However, a few Snyder fans tried to claim that the sequence of images was satire. They seem to forget that at the time of its release in 2004, Dawn of the Dead was noted for its lack of satire. Roger Ebert wrote explicitly in his review that the movie lacked social commentary, especially when compared to George Romero's 1978 Dawn of the Dead. It was obvious to anyone at the time. Those who now claim that it is satirical are rewriting history to dismiss the fairly banal statement that a white Christian director in the year of our Lord 2004 used Islamophobic imagery, much like many of the films that were made at the time. Even if Dawn of the Dead were satirical or ironic or whatever, ironic Islamophobia is still Islamophobia. I mean, a Muslim could make some sort of argument about the proper use of ironic Islamophobia, but Zack Snyder is probably the last person who should feel like they have free reign to satirize the pain and oppression of people that he does not identify with. Some people on Twitter suggested that when Snyder used this image of Muslims praying as America was invading Iraq, he was pointing out how images like this were used in real life media to force a sense of otherness on Muslims. And yes, that was a thing that the media did. And yes, the images in the opening titles are made to look like a Fox News broadcast, but they don't comment on that otherness. They just recreate it and then heighten it with zombies. This isn't an example of someone commenting on the otherness in American media. It's an example 
of otherness in American media. If you just recreate problematic imagery, then you just end up with problematic imagery. There's a whole discourse now about how this particular color grading was used in films to other the Middle East, and Snyder wasn't commenting on that look. He's actually one of the biggest examples of a director who exploited that look. But filmmakers are now acknowledging the problematic nature of these types of movies and imagery. And those creating art have a real responsibility to see how their choices carry implicit bias, even down to the color grading. Okay, so right now I'm using this blush, which is called If You Actually Spoke Out Against the Iraq War Around 2004 Like the Dixie Chicks, Your Career Was Ruined, You Were Called Unpatriotic, and You Were Blacklisted for Protesting the Violence That Eventually Claimed So Many Civilian Lives That It's Grotesque. Where things got really spicy in that Twitter thread is when people started throwing the word Islamophobic back at me. These Snyder stands said that I was Islamophobic for interpreting those images as Islamophobic. Which is not an explanation, it is a classic no you are troll. One guy even quote tweeted me saying that I was totally wrong because he is a Muslim who likes Snyder. He linked me to an article to prove that I was wrong about Dawn of the Dead. The article uh, was a 2017 personal essay on Snyder's Superman movies and it doesn't mention Dawn of the Dead once. I love personal essays. I think they add a lot to the conversation and I've written some myself, but it's not a close reading and that's not film analysis. Another bunch of comments brought up the fact that the script was written by James Gunn, so why am I attacking just Zack Snyder? And their desire to blame James Gunn for the content of Dawn of the Dead is very telling. It shows a fundamental lack of understanding of how the development process works in the film industry. Scripts are rewritten over and over and over, sometimes until the day that you shoot a scene, and often even after you shoot a scene in post-production. Just as this script was rewritten by two other writers after James Gunn left the project. The idea that James Gunn, who left the project before two other writers rewrote the script, is responsible for a few hyper-specific frames in the opening title that weren't even mentioned in the one draft that I could find online is just bananas. Right now we're using this lipstick called B-A-N-A-N-A-S. I point all this out because if we do a close reading of that Twitter thread, we see a pattern emerge. And that pattern is, None of these Snyder fans are actually responding to my criticism of those three specific images from Dawn of the Dead. Like, to an absurd degree they're not responding to it. To the point that they're linking a personal essay about another franchise entirely and going off on another screenwriter who left the project before they even shot the movie. If I saw Dawn of the Dead back in 2004 and said, hey, this seems problematic, are these Snyder fans saying that their response would have been, don't worry, in 13 years some random guy on the internet you don't know will write a personal essay that doesn't address any of your concerns, so shut up! That's not how textual analysis works. That's not how anything works. Which brings me to the heart of the matter. By doing a close reading of his work and holding him to the same standards of any prolific director, I'm proving myself to be a bigger Zack Snyder fan than any of those internet Snyder fanatics. They make so many excuses for his work. He's simultaneously a genius auteur while also not at all being responsible for the end product. They don't actually treat him like a director. They don't treat him like a filmmaker. They give their guesses, their personal essays, their petty insults, and their excuses. They throw everything at the wall because, again, they're not actually going back and engaging with his work. It's all in bad faith. And none of them are doing the work to truly understand or appreciate his movies. This highlighter is called Zoinks. This is all exhausting. Are you exhausted yet? I am, just from thinking about it. And that's the point. These nonsense arguments are meant to exhaust us so that we don't have the energy for actual discussion. And if you're the kind of fan who refuses to actually pay attention to the sounds and images contained in a movie and you angrily reply to this video or tweet at me or whatever, I just won't respond. It's a waste of my time and yours. I won't even see them because I have someone screening the video for bad faith actors and any and all comments that are just cunt. And if you enjoy Zack Snyder and you want to have a constructive conversation about his movies, I am very excited to hear from you. And if you really want to be mean, you can't. Because my mother's name is Martha. If that means anything, that means that we have to get along.
<laughs> Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel to help me make more videos, head over to patreon.com slash Fish. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications for when I put up more videos. Save Martha.